Hey there, this is Sean Hollister with Gizmodo, and I'm going to show you something pretty neat. I took the $500 Alienware Alpha gaming PC, and I gave it its birthright. I turned it into a Steam machine. Right now, we're booting up the machine into Steam OS, and I'm actually not going to skip past a thing. I want you to see exactly what this is like to use. Right now, uh, we're just booting into the system and waiting for the... Uh, painfully slow hard drive inside the Alienware Alpha to get us into the operating system. It's a bit of black, and in just a second we should see it boot up into Steam Big Picture mode. Here goes. Any moment now. Yes. So the first thing you see when you jump into Steam OS is a login screen. And if you've uh, ever used Steam before, you can use this little daisy wheel interface. Just move your analog stick or thumb pad around and tap in the letters one by one to log into your account. It's actually really easy to do after a while. Surprisingly quick, though of course not as quick as a keyboard. And, oh, do you think I would show you our actual password? No. Okay. Let's just log into my uh, my own Steam account here. Then you'll see the main screen. This is the primary screen of Steam OS. It's the same as Steam Big Picture Mode on Windows. You can take a look at your library, buy some games, or go ahead and chat with your friends. I'm going to tab on over to my friends list right now. You can talk to any of these folks. If I've got a uh, microphone plugged in, I can press a single button to give them a call and start up some voice chat. You can take a look at your recent uh, it's friend invites. We'll pop you over to the web browser, because the uh, SteamOS also has a full web browser installed. doesn't let you do things like Hulu and Netflix, but it is a web browser. Unlike the Alienware Alpha without SteamOS, you can actually adjust the display to fit your screen if there's any overscan on your television. And this is hugely important, you could change your audio settings. With the Windows version, you had to jump out into Windows in order to hook up a USB headset, but you can see my Logitech G930 is right there. I've got my wireless Logitech G930 headset on, and I can configure it right here in SteamOS without ever leaving the Steam interface, which is way way better than it was before you know what else you can do surround sound jump right in here and set up 5.1 surround sound you can even click through here and set up uh, dts and ac3 pass throughs because my audio receiver can natively understand these formats i don't need to have the uh the system do the processing here of course since you'd probably like to be able to hear the audio i'm going to set it back to uh stereo my HDMI capture device won't let me uh, give you surround sound. All right, there's a lot more to show you in the settings menu if you really want to, but I thought this was interesting. The Alienware Alpha was always supposed to be a Steam machine, and it natively recognizes that this is a system with uh, Alien FX. This is lighting on the front of the chassis of my Alienware Alpha. I can change the alien head to light up uh, different, all kinds of different colors, and also the little triangle on the side. I'll show you a picture of that uh, in the post. So let's jump out of here a second and show you what games look like. So in my library, you can see a whole bunch of games that I've played recently, including a bunch that aren't actually available on SteamOS. This is everything I've played on my Windows PCs, too. But if I jump on over to the game tab, it'll show me what I can actually play right now based on the fact that I have an Xbox 360 controller in my hands and then I'm running the Steam OS. It's a limited selection. There's only 24 games I own that are able to do those things, but they all pop up here right away. It's not like I've got to do anything fancy to get started with those. It already knows that I have these. Some of them I've installed ahead of time. Others I can just install now by clicking into them. Some good stuff in here. There's Towerfall and Portal 2, Trine and Octodad. Gone Home is a favorite of mine. It's a lot smaller than the total number of SteamOS games that I actually own, though. I've 
a lot of the games that I own, 74 of them in fact, uh, are able to play it here. It's a lot of Half-Life, sure, but there's a lot of good indie stuff too. So Witcher 2. You might notice a little keyboard icon by the side though. I would actually need to plug in a mouse and keyboard to get these games working. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so now I've got my mouse. If I jump back into the library again, go to games and go back to the games I can play. Now all the keyboard games are enabled. Now I can just run any of these or install any of them if I want to. I can install Gary's Mod. I can jump over here into Shadowrun Returns, install that if I like. I haven't done those in advance. Uh, one that I have done, I believe, is uh, Witcher 2. Yes, that's installed. You can see the keyboard icon in the corner. It's warning me I'm not going to be able to play with my controller. But now that I've got keyboard and mouse plugged in, I can do that. But you know what? Why would I want to use a keyboard and mouse if I have a Steam controller? Look how my interface just changed. I plugged in the Steam controller, and you can see the buttons at the bottom of the screen change, the little icons next to each of these changed. The half controller icon you see there next to Team Fortress Classic means the game has partial controller support. The full icon next to Trine 2, Super Meat Boy, means that it's got full controller support for gamepads. I'm going to jump into Portal 2 real quick and show you what that looks like with me using a Steam controller. Now I warn you, I've got an early version of the Steam Controller, a very early one, and I'm not terribly good at using it. The, uh, the touchpads, they're a little bit too sensitive for me. I'm not quite used to using them. I was never a big fan of trackballs, and the Steam Controller's touchpad tries to emulate a trackball, and I just haven't spent the time to get used to it yet. But there's another interesting thing I can show you in Portal 2 as well, in addition to that, so here goes. Again, we're dealing with the fact that Alienware Alpha has a slow hard drive instead of a staff solid state drive, but I can still show you a bit of what's going on. So this is the very first time I've booted into Portal 2 on this system. You can tell because I've never set the resolution, never set the display settings to be proper. So here we go, let's do that real quick. And then uh, after I jump through this menu real quickly, there we go. I can go down to controller settings and show you that, yes indeed, I can use the Steam Controller. In fact, in the Steam Controller button layouts, it even has a picture of the Steam Controller right here. It's already been mapped because Valve took the trouble to set up controls for this particular game. So, there we go. Take a look at a couple of the other configs that you can use with the Steam Controller real quick, in case you don't like those exactly where they are. You can have other controls mapped to those buttons of the controller. We'll jump right in. So the other interesting thing about Steam OS games, if you've been playing Steam games on your PC before, it's actually fairly likely that you'll have a save game backed up in the cloud already. And so even though I've never played Portal 2 on this machine before, not even once, never started it on this Alienware Alpha, it should pick up exactly where I left off. You know, as soon as the hard drive loads it. Give that a second. Oh, this facility goes. will self-destruct in two minutes. Enough! I yeah. told you not to put these cores on them. Do you know this, do you? this is pretty far into the game. This is actually probably a part of the game you probably won't want to see if you uh, are not a fan of spoilers, so perhaps we should jump back. But as you can see, I've got some real precision here. My right animal. I mean, my right touchpad, my Steam controller, and those little movements that uh, you probably wouldn't be able to see me do with a, uh, a traditional gamepad. So we'll jump out of here real quick, and not spoil any of that game for you. Let's see. What else can we play? I think I'm going to unplug that Steam controller for a second. I'm, honestly, I'm waiting to see how they refine it at uh, GDC next month, but not a fan of it as it exists. It is it's really tough to use. Oh yeah, let's jump into Transistor here. And after a bit more loading, you should be able to see me pick up right where I left off on my Windows PC. Again, this is a game that I downloaded and installed on SteamOS. It was really easy to do so because I already owned it. It 
Steam knew that I owned it. I just had to bring a copy over to this system. And then, uh, without any other prompting from me, it should pick up exactly where I left off in the game. Really love this game. The art style is fantastic. Oh, yep. Here we go. Quite a ways through the game. I've got some pretty cool abilities already. In Transistor, you've got this, uh, this talking sword with all of these technological uh, weaponry. You can pause time and fire all of these abilities out there, which help you defeat your foes. And you can sing. Because apparently your character is a popular singer in this somewhat dystopian world. Okay. Let's jump out of there. And, uh, oh yes, Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy, unfortunately, is a game that does not have Steam Cloud support. As I learned when I tried to play it for a bit on Steam OS and then jumped back to my Windows PC again, I discovered that all the progress I'd made in this extremely difficult roguelike game uh, was for naught. So when I'm done with the Steam OS machine and playing on Windows, okay. So, still, even when the, with this selection of 74 games that I own, it's not enough games for me. Let's take a look and see what else I can buy. If you take a look at the Steam store interface, It'll also be showing me games that are available for controller for SteamOS. It is showing me the games I can actually play here. It's not taking me to an interface where there's all kinds of Windows stuff that I can't play. It's teasing me. There's an option to show all that, but right now I'm looking at just the stuff I can actually play. The problem is that if you look at the popular titles, if you look at this interface looking for good stuff to play, there is some stuff you'll recognize. There's a bunch of Borderlands, there's Dying Light is a nice new game, uh, Shovel Knight here, some Portal, Don't Starve, Metro, Rogue Legacy, there's Transistor I showed you earlier. There's some good stuff out here, there's a lot of good stuff out here, but it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things. I might say that, honestly, that there are more games here than you'd expect to find on a, a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One right now. And there's a lot, but a lot of it's stuff you've never heard of. And, you know, here if I go to the SteamOS and Linux category, a lot of it's just this, this same stuff. So compared to a Windows computer, it's not a lot. But Steam has in-home streaming. So I can connect this to my Windows machine and then play anything that's on my Windows gaming PC upstairs. I'm down here in the living room on my television, and now if you look, the list of games I can play has shot up dramatically. Here are all these games I have installed on my Windows PC upstairs that I can stream through my Wi-Fi router, and I'm going to show you how that works. I've got Enslaved, Metal Gear Rising, Mirror's Edge, Nidhogg, one of my favorites. Love Nidhogg. Resident Evil 4. All kinds of good stuff. Right now, though, I'm on a bit of a Dark Souls 2 kick. And that will let me illustrate why Steam in-home streaming still has its work cut out for it. So let's jump over there. Oh, yes, Dark. D. D for Dark Souls. I should probably know that that's there, right? Okay, you can see it's going to stream it from my computer upstairs, which is named Phoenix for some reason. I think it's because... Oh, yes, there was, was a rebuild... And I had a bunch of issues with my previous machine. I was like, okay, it's going to be rising from the ashes. Anyhow, I'm going to stream this from my computer upstairs. My computer upstairs is plugged via Ethernet cable into my router. The Steam machine downstairs is over Wi-Fi. And I've got a really good Wi-Fi router, so this should go well, right? If you look down there, I don't know if you can quite make it out in the bottom left corner. You can see I'm streaming this at 1080p resolution at about 60 frames per second. And I'm also showing you... If I ever get any lag spikes, it's keeping track of all those for me because I've got this setting turned on where I can see any spike in my ping. And you can see the red peak there. There was a little bit of a spike there, but didn't really notice it. Mostly, it's it's pretty stable right now. And I've found, for the most part, that this game is really playable until it's not. And everything I've tried on Steam Picker Picture Mode is really playable until it's not. And I'll illustrate what I mean for you in a second. I mean, this looks, maybe you can't tell in the video, but this looks really crisp. 
it's not quite as insanely crisp as it is on my computer upstairs with the great graphics card. But seeing it, you know, there's not too much artifacting. There's not too much noticeable compression going on. It looks good, and it's responsive. I mean, it feels as responsive and looks better than this same game does on an Xbox 360, for sure. And, you know, my performance in this game should not be indicative of that. I'm not great at this game. I'm okay. As you can see, I'm pretty far along. This is the Iron Keep. It's this lava-filled castle environment. I could make it a good way to do this game, but I'm also, like, level 100, so... It's not like I'm fantastic at this. Pull this lever. Down they go into the pit. This is a... Oh, oh, what's going on? Oh, oh boy. Okay. Well, I guess it's a good thing. Oh, that arrow just flew right by my head. I guess it's a good thing that huge spike in my wireless connectivity did not cause me to drop into the pit. It's a good thing I wasn't, you know, walking forward at the time that that happened because I could be very, very dead right now. But... Thankfully, I wasn't, so everything's back to normal. Let's keep playing for a bit. We'll raise the platform back up from the lava pit so I can cross it, and everything will be hunky-dory. All right. There's some nasty archers over here. There's the giant troll-like thing. Maybe the giant troll-like thing will walk over the edge of the bridge into the pit. One could only hope. Okay. Ooh, okay. Let's see. Oh, yes, I know what I could do to this archer. We'll walk over here, and goodbye. It's a good thing there wasn't a giant lag spike while I was standing at that platform. I mean, you could say that about just about everything in this game. This is an extremely unforgiving game, and I'm asking it, I'm asking Steam Big Picture Mode to, or excuse me, Steam in-home streaming to let me play this like I would on my PC upstairs. Maybe that's not the smartest move, but we'll see. So far, pretty good. Haven't died yet. Everything seems fine. Now we're going to go into a very, very tricky room. Okay, so this troll's going to charge at me with this giant, giant club of mace. I'm not sure what you call this huge thing. Set up a nice fire trap for him, and that's end. Oh, I love this part. So there's this giant blade. We'll raise it up so I can cross, and come on over here. Yes, troll. You know what's coming. You, do, you have no idea what's coming, I should say. For the moment. Ah, yes. Get him to stand. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, boy. Uh. Hmm. Well, again, good thing that came at just the right moment. It could have been very, very bad. Another place where things can get very, very bad. Filled with spike and flame traps. practice this a little bit, as you can see. I've probably gone through this room a dozen times now. Easily a dozen times. Okay, so a little fire trap there for this troll. And looks like I timed it just right so I don't get burned by the flames on the way out. Stab, stab. Whoops. And he's dead. Okay, everything's good so far. Let's go face off against this boss. any luck, I might be able to actually beat this boss. There's a rather nasty fire breathing. I think it's a dragon up ahead. But I've been upgrading this halberd for quite some time now. And I think it'll do some good damage. Also, this shield I have has tremendous fire resistance. As you can see, I died here fairly recently, the last time I played. Okay, here goes. Yep. I've been uh, studying the attack patterns of this beast for a while now. Apparently not quite well enough, but uh, he's, he's moving pretty slow. I've got time to heal up. Okay. I'm guessing he must not be able to see when he opens his mouth. Okay, done some pretty good damage. Oh yeah. I'm 50% with that. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, that's... I never saw what's coming. Yep. So, 
this game, Steam on home streaming, maybe not a good idea. So that's pretty much all you can do with the Steam machine right now, but uh, let me show you one last thing before you leave. I'm going to tackle that boss again. I'd like to do so with a bit of my own music. You can do that with Steam OS. Just plug in a drive, or USB thumbstick, or even just locally stored tunes. Play them during any game. Thanks for watching.